reporting from Down Under. Um, yeah, I just decided, uh, I was just looking at Hurricane Dorian and decided to have a look on Null School and I was shocked when I found this. This is the Arctic. Uh, this is Greenland here, this is Siberia, this is Alaska and well I don't really go by the winds. It says 47 kilometers an hour, 36 and then up here north of Iceland uh, 60 kilometers an hour so uh, let's just have a brief look. So 991 hectopascals, um, 995, 999, 1,985. So it's not exactly a, a cyclone, uh, but it's definitely storms blowing in the Arctic and I can't possibly see how ice could be forming under these circumstances. This was uh, interesting. Uh, this is, I'm working a lot on Twitter these days and this was came from uh, Larry79115 and he's quoted the DIM model, which I mean it's something that I'm not really uh, familiar with, but I'm just going to use the uh, uh, the data. Uh, this is wave height, uh, and he says waves help break down ice flows, prevent ice reformation, as well as transferring heat. So let's just go in a wee bit and. Um, this, yeah, it says uh, sea ice thickness uh, 1st of September, um, so I presume that the, the colouring is, is representing that, and then I've overlaid that with wave heights in metres. So look at this, 4.9 metres, 1.4 metres, uh, 3 metres. 2.1 uh, how any ice can form under those conditions so I'll, I'll let you be the judge and he goes on uh, these are sea, sea surface temperatures overlaid over a dim map the 1st of September and they're showing even more open water. Um, I'm not quite sure what this means. ENS doesn't treat open water over 77 degrees north. Uh, and he's reminded us that the melting point of ocean water is minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. So it needs to get colder uh, than just zero um, uh, for the uh, ocean water uh, to freeze and uh, I'll just remind you that with all of these storms and with the uh, the warm water from the Atlantic and the Pacific we're getting a lot of mixing of fresh water and um, and seawater uh, so that has a real effect on the uh, on the uh, the refreezing of the of the Arctic, and uh, this he says is indications of either open flows or tight flows. Um, I I'm just going to kind of provide this. Um, what I understand from this is really what we're talking about is uh, it's not sea ice but sea slush 
and he maintains that since 2013 there are signs that all of the Arctic has had open flows so that we are dealing with rotten ice and we know that there's no um, there's no multi-year ice so uh, we can get cold weather in the Arctic uh, but despite that as I've demonstrated before uh, the melt season is no longer as far from uh, over. I really don't want to be looking at the Arctic every day. I really don't. Um, in fact, I'd like to put my feet up, but my conscience just won't allow it. Uh, this is how things, this is today's data. Uh, you can see here that's obvious. Uh, signs of of uh, of a storm I would I, I would say everything is covered in clouds so you can't see much except here um, so let's just have a look at it and what I uh, what I think might be happening is I mean all of this area is in clouds so this 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 ice down here um, and I suspect as it's disappearing elsewhere uh, the slush uh, the winds have blown it all against um, the uh, north coast of Greenland uh, but you can see how elsewhere um, the ice is completely broken up so yeah, the ice is uh, not in a very good shape. 